Hello everyone, welcome to Homestead in the Wood with D and I am D. I thought I'd take y'all on a little garden update. I'm hoping pretty soon that we're already starting to harvest some things, but I'm hoping pretty soon that the tomatoes will be ready because boy do we have a lot of tomatoes. But I want to go over a few things first. Uh, to start, we're amateurs. We're backyard gardeners. We're not professionals and we do things our way. It may not be the best way, but we do it our way. And I think as you'll be able to see, it does a pretty good job. So, well, as you can see here, we do not have a gate, okay? Into the garden, cause this is what we do. And you're gonna think it's kind of weird, but we have a swimming pool. So whenever Mr. Maddox here has to go out and go to the bathroom, he pees in the bucket. And we take that and spread it poured around the garden we and we also put it in a sprayer spray it in and around the garden we don't have a problem with critters or uh, deer or anything everything stays away so but I wanted to you to see that we started everything from seed to plants to putting them in the ground and where they are out now so everything was blessed with moon water and uh, we use neem oil, diatomaceous earth, Epsom salts, daconil, and Mir miracle Grow. That's what we use on our plants. Uh, if we see some of the, the uh, fruit starting to look like it's getting uh, blossom and rot, we use rot stock. Uh, we, have, we work on the plants every couple of days through the week and usually Saturday is our big garden day where we really get into everything but you know we try to make sure that all the dead leaves and all the yellow leaves or anything that looks like it's having a problem uh, we make sure to get it off there when we see it uh, we uh, look for an infestation or aphids white flies hornworms uh, beetles thrips all of that we haven't had too much seriously we haven't had too much problems so we also like to check the growth of the plants and we check the fruit to see again like I said if there's any blossom in the rock and thank the Lord we haven't had any trouble with that either I think we had one tomato that, that had blossom in the rock um, if you do have blossom in the rock generally that's a calcium deficiency and it needs Epsom salts and rock stock so now I'm going to show you the awesome growth on uh, the, the plants and the production that we have. And first off is the cucumbers. We have white or picklers to begin with here at the beginning of the gate. And then we have white swine and space dancers. On the fence right here, we have straight eights. We have some tomatoes. Um, also, we have straight eights right here in the ground, too. These are um, Walla Wallas, Walla Walla onions. They weren't doing, I don't know, Walla Wallas didn't do very good this year, but these, these seem to do good. So, um, the tomatoes are doing great have one here. I actually have several here that like, should I walk in there? But well, yeah. Oh God, I hate to walk in. You work so hard on it. This here is a six foot tomato steak. And these are over six foot. We've got great, great production. Uh, Hope you can see down here on the bottom. We have some fruit that is really, really big. So it's right here. Um, so we've got, I think we've got about six or seven different varieties of tomatoes. You can see here. Fruit, fruit production. I've got a really big one right here. 
that too. We have tomatoes, we have peppers, we've got pepperoncinis, uh, jalapenos, and um, California wonders. Let's see here. I don't remember what kind this is. Giant pink. Okay, giant pink. We are going to have to do something there. And back here, we have our beets. Can you, you want me to take it? Mm -mm. Okay, but we do have beets, two rows of beets down through here. <clears throat> On the end, we have, I don't, I don't know if you want to walk around to the zucchinis. Uh, we do have quite a few zucchinis at the end of the, the rows. And they are blooming like crazy. The bees are all over them, and it's just wonderful. But that's all. Uh, this is the upper 40. These plants right here. Uh, I don't know if I can get a picture of this or not. Oh, you want the snider? Yeah, we got some that's already pretty close to three pounders. And they are flawless. These are guys. Let's see if we can see those. And let's see. The plants are doing really well. They're producing well. We've just got them in and about everywhere. Oops, sorry about that. And here's the zucchinis. And we have got all kinds of blooms. I just hope we get all kinds of zucchinis. Come over here. Cucumbers are doing awesome. This is a cherry bush that's so I've got blue, little tomatoes all over it. And I've got some in here. I'm waiting to get a little bit more of them. So, but now, I want you to check these out, guys. Check these these are mortgage lifters. These tomatoes you're looking at right here is a mortgage lifter. Last year, see this one right here? I'd say he's over two pounds right now. And that's their nature to grow like that. That's not blossoming right. But last year, I had two and a half pound mortgage lifters all year long. They're an extremely good tomato. Extremely good. Yes. Got them in here. This one right here, this little plant right here is a steakhouse. And you notice, you see the leaves on here and see his leaves? See the difference in them? And I know what people say about planting so close together, but there's nothing wrong with it as long as you don't get into any disease and it spreads like wildfire. Last year, I had a crop like this of beautiful tomatoes and I was trying to tie them up and I ran out of racks. So stupid me ran out to Blank King and bought some twine 
baleen twine, twine. Yeah. sisal twine, and tied them up. Within three days, all of the plants turned yellow and died. All of them. So don't use baleen twine or nope. sisal twine. Just if you have to go to the to the Pete's Goods store and get you some. Uh, I don't even know. I don't know my materials, but this is like bed sheet material. These are bed sheets from the hospital yeah. torn up. And that little plant right there, it's short, but see the tomatoes on the bottom? That's a Belgian pink. That's even different from the giant pink. It's a Belgian pink. But all in all, we got the beef steaks, and we got um, a couple of Abe Lincolns. Uh, got some Cherry Licious in here. Um, there's another one that's over there. I can't remember the name of it. But all in all, but they're all started from seeds. Yep. We started them in January. We got seven months into this crop right now. Seven months. Uh, you can see they're well over my head. And next year, I'm not, this is the last year I'm doing cages. Cages are just too much work and they do better without the cages. Well, they seem to also, if the limb touches the cage, then it turns yellow. Yep. It dies. So, we're just not even going to do that next year. Okay. This one's a hider. Yep. But here in a few days, we'll have ripe tomatoes. And you also know, or notice, how green the leaves are up here. Dark, gonna, dark, jade. dark, dark jade green, yeah. Dark I'm going to show you something green. here in a minute. That um, Now this tomato plant right here, this is your classic beef steak. That's what this plant is, a classic beef steak. It's a delicious tomato. And they're really, they're really doing well. But I'll tell you, if you're going to try and grow them pinks, they're hard to grow. The giant pinks are a difficult tomato to grow. You really got to stay on top of them. But they're doing well. They're doing real well. Yep. That's, we, my, that's my little aid back here in the corner. Yep. Well, we got uh, some steel pictures of the plants when they just torn up. This guy right here, he's, he's my Abe Lincoln. <laughs> and there's another one in here. I just don't know where he's at. So. He's on the very back row on the next to the fence. So we're going to go to the lower 40 and show you the difference. It's the lower 40 feet, <laughs> not 40 acres. Well, no, but they know I call it the upper 40 and the lower 40. Ooh, there's my melon. I dry them. So here's our pepper. And my walking Egyptian, and my mint. This is just some spring onions we put out late. This is our candy onion patch, and amongst the peppers. That accidentally, a lot of them got pulled accidentally. Yeah, I accidentally pulled them. I admit it. This is some pepper sinis that got set out late, and jalapenos that got set out late. This is New York head lettuce. It's doing pretty good. These two are. The white stuff you see on there is diam diametaceous earth. Yes. And I did not pull up the Merlots, all of them, because Terry really likes the Merlot lettuce, so I'm letting that pick back up. And I we're going did to re replant this. This morning I did pull up all the lettuce here because we're going to plant it in something else. The. Uh, Those are little. Jalapenos. Oh, I'm gonna show them. Here's here is a California wonder. Little little guy coming on right there. I've got a whole bunch of pepperoncinis back here. I'm just waiting for them to get a little bit bigger. I did harvest some more uh, jalapenos. California, er, not California winters, um, jalapenos and pep pepperoncinis. And this time, I really think this is a cherry licious it because cherry -licious. there's there's yellow ones down here I missed earlier. Yeah. So, 
So this one here is your classic beef steak. Yeah. Classic beef steak. These peppers down here in the front. These are Hungarian hot wax. They're freaking hot, guys. It is hot. Here. This plant here we've had trouble with. We had to pull one that was already there. A yeah, plant, I did right there. But it turned yellow on us. And we've been trying to treat this one. Yeah, this this one down here is one we had. Well, that one and this one is the one we had trouble with. But it's got tomatoes on it. I'm gonna let it go as long as I can. It's not spreading. It's something. I'm not certain what it is. We did put Miracle Girl on them this morning, so. Oh, look at these guys. Mm, mm, mm. I think we ought to fry that one. Right, right. And here they're all back in here. There you go. Let's see. There they are. I want you to look. What? You're not going to believe this. Two tomatoes fell off. Yep. <laughs> well, there's our cookers for and tonight. Bad luck. Look at this. Damn the, damn the bad luck. Look at that. Here. Hold them still. There we go. They're going to be on the grill here in a few yeah. minutes. But they're all doing exceptionally well. Except for that one and that one that we had to pull up. Hmm. We've got a lot of fruit bell peppers. That's what these are down in front of this. Over here is my jalapenos. You can see them. And more of the pepperoncinis. This is the Belgian pinks. Yes, and these tomatoes get huge. And they're really hard to grow. They are. I've had nothing but trouble out of them from years back and growing them really this is my first successful good year with them and under here Take a dig. it's hard to see with the sun but we need the sun Another pepperoncini here. Sunflowers are doing really well. Japanese beetles eating them up, but I've been spraying them. Yep. This is our carrot bed. Mighty carrots. You'd be amazed how many carrots will come out of that. Yeah. When they start popping up out of the ground, it's going to be time to harvest them. A week or two <laughs> after they do that. My herbs are doing good. My chamomile, German chamomile, and uh, holy basil. I don't, I'm not sure about my lavender. If anybody knows if I ought to snip that off or how low I ought to snip it, let me know. Thyme. Lemon. Lemon basil. Yes. Oh, it smells so good. And I've got some rosemary going here in the back. But that is the garden, kids. So, I just want y'all, to, though, to look at the color of the leaves that are down here versus the color of the leaves that are in the garden in the upper 40. And the reason is? The reason is that's natural dirt up there in the upper garden. It's natural dirt. Just out of two years ago, three years ago, it, the whole garden looked just like this right here. And I cleared all that because it's just use, useless space, you know. It's, it's in the devil's strip. And uh, I turned it into a little vegetable garden. I started raising vegetables in it. Now, this dirt down here is bulk dirt. And I'm not going to get into any detail with it, but it's in bags and garden dirt. And uh, I'm going to tell you, to be honest with you, I wouldn't use it. Yeah, we won't, we'll not use that next year. I had all kinds of problems out of it from, uh, it was loaded in aphids. Aphids were in it. Um, I've had all kinds of different characteristics with it, things that I don't like. And 
it's supposed to have been uh, like guaranteed for like seven months of uh, you know fertilizer and stuff in it but no I don't think so I won't use it again it's pretty but I won't use it again yeah. well guys that's it I hope you've enjoyed it I hope you go back and see from where I planted the plants and how small they were to where they are now and this little cherry licious he's as big as the uh, sunflower so I'm looking forward to eating some more I did find some cherry licious in the upper 40 that that I got so there's our zucchinis but you guys have a great 4th of July and be blessed and we'll catch you again on the next one. If you like what you've seen, hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber, how about hitting the subscribe and the little bell for all the notifications. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be notified. And you can kind of keep track on what's going on in the garden. Again, you never know what's going what's gonna to be on my channel. So stay tuned and uh, God bless.